Today's episode is sponsored by LastPass. I've covered my challenges with trying to produce glass fairly extensively in the past. But one material that's actually been an even bigger challenge and been holding me back in many ways has been metals. Through gold panning and some silver mining, I've been able to produce some precious metals, but only in small quantities. Making a workable quantity of metal has been pretty elusive to me, ever since a very poor attempt I made at smelting iron several years ago. But if I ever want to make it past the Stone Age, I'm going to need to figure out how to make some metals. Instead of jumping straight into the Iron Age, I'm going to start with one of the very first metals humans began working with, copper. By mining it, and then extracting out hopefully a usable quantity of copper. It takes millions of specialized, skilled experts around the world to produce the countless items we use every day. But could an average person do everything to make all these items alone? Well, that's what I try to attempt. My name is Andy, and this is How to Make Everything. But first, thanks to LastPass for sponsoring today's episode. If you do anything online nowadays, the question doesn't seem to be if you'll be hacked, but more like when you'll be hacked. The best way to protect yourself is to have complicated, regularly updated passwords. But keeping those organized can be a pain. Thanks to LastPass, they make this part easy. If you've been following our channel, you know we've talked about using LastPass Password Manager to keep all of our passwords in one place. Now that we've been using it for a while, we can confirm that it's still working great for us. No matter where we are in the world, LastPass relieves the trouble of looking for passwords and anxiety around getting locked out of accounts. With LastPass, you don't have to write, remember, or reset passwords. LastPass allows you to keep track of your passwords easily so you can stay sane and focus on being productive. When you update a password, it will automatically update on all your devices, no matter where you are. With the LastPass browser plugin, you can autofill login info quickly, as well as automatically update LastPass when you update your passwords. Put your passwords on autopilot with LastPass. Click the link in the description below to get your free trial of LastPass. Between the Stone Age and Bronze Age was a brief period called the Calcolithic or Copper Age, beginning around 7,000 years ago. Like gold and silver, copper can exist as a native metal. And it was these native copper nuggets that were likely first exploited to make metal tools. Over native copper is pretty rare, but it was eventually figured out you could extract copper from various ores through smelting and gain access to a larger supply. Copper is a fairly soft metal, so soft it can be worked pretty easily even when it's cold, and its wide use was eventually replaced when it was discovered a stronger version of it could be made. In West Asia and Europe, this occurred around 3500 to 2500 BC, and it was discovered that adding additional compounds to copper would produce a stronger alloy, bronze. While in California earlier this year, we were able to find some information on a few abandoned copper mines in the Mojave Desert. Abandoned in the 1940s, this area had a few options of mines to check out. Unfortunately, the directions to it were a bit vague and took us on a bit of a wild goose chase following down some wrong roads. Folks, Andy George is lost. So is Chris, because he's lost with him. Finally, after following a nearly invisible road through some really rough trails that had been partially washed away by flash floods, we approached the mine. So we pulled out here for the uh, copper mine. Just looking on the ground everywhere are these green rocks. Copper ores can come in a few different colors depending on the composition, but many forms of it are the distinctive green. So this fairly uncommon green tint was a pretty good sign. I don't know how rich it is, but uh, probably at least some copper. At this point, the road was getting a little too rough for our vehicle to continue. So we'd have to go by foot and we'd have to rush. Well, I'd have to rush. Well, Chris took a sweet time. <sighs> Chris had to basically stop and throw up. So we could make it to the mine before the sunset, and we were left stranded in the dark in the middle of the desert. It's pretty green. I have a full bucket before you make it to the mine. All right, I'm coming up to the entrance. Hard to judge from the distance, but it looks like it has a slight green tint to it. I think I'm just about there. That bucket's almost full. I just keep finding really bright green rocks that have to be something with copper in it. Stuff right here. <laughs> Did all that. I refilled up my bucket, so I just ditched it. Okay, around this corner. Where is this line? Around here somewhere. There are rattlesnakes. Or just green splotches. I think there's copper here. Look at all these holes. How deep these caves are. They're just the surface. From down there. Here it is. Is that Chris? Still alive? After hours, 
not being able to find Andy. There he is. Up there being stoic. I have walked a long while. After over an hour of hiking, I finally reached the site of the abandoned mine, where there was a very obvious exposed surface of green rock. I don't know which one to go to. Yeah. I don't think there's any rabbits in it. It's a bit cooler in here. So if I were a rattlesnake, it would make sense to go in here. Deep is this guy. Come on. Any snakes in here? It's nice and cool. Definitely not safe to do this. I'm not seeing much here, actually. Well, there's a little bit, but it looks like the surface. This mine is supposed to have a few varieties of ores, including veins of malachite and azurite. I poked my head into a few holes to see if I could find any, but wasn't able to figure out where the main mine actually was. But I was also reluctant to dig too deeply, as it's kind of dangerous to explore old mines. Get out of here for you. I think these might go to the main one. Uh, it's very narrow. I'm not very, very fond of tight places, so I'm just gonna get some surface stuff. Is that bad? Along the surface, just leading up to here, there's just green rocks everywhere. That has to have some sort of copper in it, I'm pretty sure. Basically, this whole cliffside is just green. So I don't know the purity of it. And in a few days, I'm gonna meet up with the geologist and uh, we get some input if we can extract some copper from this. All right, <clears throat> let's get some rocks. Starting to run short on time before it got dark, I collected some of the surface stones. This should hopefully contain at least some amount of copper. Uh, just gonna get some chunks and uh, probably call it a day. All right, where'd I put my bucket? It's back here. No, oh, oh, my rocks. Those are my good ones. I don't know how much copper this will actually make. Hopefully it should be enough. I just gotta bring it back to the car. Got my bucket of copper ore. I just gotta get back, film setting. Coyotes are coming out soon. Let's get out of here. <laughs> then a quick visit to Dave to confirm if I actually collected copper or not. So I was able to collect some of this copper ore. This, I hope yeah. it's copper ore. Can yeah, you tell it's me? Yeah, copper ore. All right. What yeah, kind this is, is Chrysocola. Chrysocola. And actually, very good color. You guys, you guys had a heck of a night. Collect really nice piece. It's a copper silicate. Yeah, that's one of your great copper specimens. Dave keep me in that my yield might not be too large from the ore that I collected. It might it virtually be grams. Oh really? Yeah, yeah. Out of out of a substantial amount. Once again, there's a lot of impurities. Mm -hmm. That's what you have to work with. So I'll need to consider the most efficient method for extraction if I want to get a usable amount. But first, need to make it small. And the next step, as pretty much always, is to crush it and mill it in a ball mill. Get it to a small particle size so I can extract the ore. So, smash, smash. Done some of it and it's pretty soft, so it actually grinds down pretty quickly. So I got the copper ore all crushed up and in the ball mill, I just need a little run for a few days and get nice, fine particle sizes. So for a low grade ore, like the stuff I collected, the process of electro winning is the, probably the best way to do it, which is the same method they use today for a lot of copper extraction. The first step is I have a bath of sulfuric acid, which I'm gonna dissolve it into, and the copper will react with the sulfuric acid to produce copper sulfate. All the impurities will settle out. So then from the copper sulfate, I will run electricity through it, and on one of the anodes will form pure copper. So I've let the copper sulfate solution react for a few days to do the electro winning process. So I'm going to measure out what I got and see what type of yield I can expect from my larger batch. Got the dried sample now, hopefully a majority of the copper. Do some math, figure out what concentration we were able to extract from the raw ore. Not looking good. Math time. Can you do math in my head? 166 six, mm. minus 166, yeah, a little under two grams. Parts over whole. I don't remember how to do significant figures. So we get about 2.8% of actual copper from the ore. 
which is actually higher than I expected. I got a little bit over 50 pounds of raw ore. So my final yield should be a pound and a half. Not bad. That's good to know. Now to do the big batch. I did not. Sorry, I'm not sure. Wasn't talking to you, Alexa. Anyways, now that I know what to expect, get started on the full batch. We'll ventilate it outside, add the sulfuric acid very slowly. So with the sulfuric acid reacts with the copper ore overnight last night and produce copper sulfate, which should now be in solution. And most of the solids should have settled. So I'm just gonna take from the top, strain it, and then I can begin the lecture winning. Put the negative onto the stainless steel. Got the batch of copper sulfate all strained. So we're gonna get this guy. In there, get a few lead. Try and get as much surface area as possible. I believe that'll be the uh, factor for the speed. And then we'll turn it on. And we should get bubbles, in theory. Wish I knew what I was doing. Ooh, it's already plating. Copper. Let's let that run overnight and see what happens. I let the electrolysis run on the solution for about two weeks now. It took longer than I expected, but seems to have mostly stopped reacting. So I assume I have most of the copper. And as you can see here, a lot of it formed on the actual steel itself. I need to scrape this off. So I had a few of the uh, lead kind of the anodes that uh, fell off during it. So I need to rinse any copper off of those and not include those because I don't want to melt lead. I try to limit how poisoned I get. I can get it with my fingers. and strain the rest. And Into the kiln, I threw several batches of copper extraction I had done, as well as a whole steel cathode, just to melt any remaining copper off of it. at the bottom there. Scraped off a little bit of slag here. It's at least somewhat iron. This is the solid stuff floating on the surface. So probably have a bit more I need to remove and then pour it into the muffin pan, which I'm preheating. Just a little bit of slag, not too bad. Pretty good. clean pour. It might burn through that. <laughs> Woo. Hold out your hand. <laughs> <laughs> so I was able to take this green rock and make this brown metal. Took a lot of these rocks though. So the end result of all that is I have 0.899 pounds. Hoping for a pound, but uh, a little short. For that amount of copper, its current value, that's this $2.50. And how much did I spend to source this and make it from scratch? It's about uh, $535, including the airplane ticket, a renting all-terrain vehicle to get through those trails and all the equipment, and then the hours of time to actually extract this. So, not a great deal. Still have some ore to process. Some of it I'm gonna keep just because it's pretty. And then in the meantime, I have copper, a metal I can use for future projects, like my camera.
ended up using a very modern method to extract the ore I collected since I wasn't able to find any richer ores such as malachite at the mine. However, I was able to purchase some for less than $535. So I'm hoping to do a future video attempting to extract it in a more primitive way that they did back in the Bronze Age. Oh, my mom is gonna be so pissed when she sees what I did to her muffin pan. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe and check out other content we have covering a wide variety of topics. Also, if you've enjoyed these series, consider supporting us on Patreon. We are largely a fan-funded channel and depend on the support of our viewers in order to keep our series going. Thanks for watching.